welcome back everyone uh, it's been a long time i have not uploaded many videos and i have got many uh, comments and also personally those who know me they have been telling me that why are you not uploading anyway i was actually not getting time and at the same time i was not well also so uh, finally i got some time to like uh, I utilize it for uh, you all and uh, I wanted to actually complete this series as fast as possible because then I'll be going to some other series I am in a uh, you know I'm actually thinking to start engine as well as uh, some other smaller uh, the small modules that we have the I mean the where the syllabus is less like uh, module 5 4 and uh, you know uh, the ones the other ones which are small where people are generally they are applying again and again but there for 2 3 marks they cannot uh, clear it so I'm thinking about to start all those as well so as soon as I complete 11 I'll be definitely switching to those so the ones that are waiting uh, for other modules to come up please wait I'll definitely try my best to finish this as early as possible and then uh, go to the next one anyway so this particular module uh, series will be talking about uh, the flight controls that is 8827 let us just quickly go through the chapter let's see what is there in this see uh, this particular chapter is a separate chapter all total that is 8827 which specifically talks about the flight controls of an aircraft okay especially uh, uh, it is a, it is a special chapter on the flight controls because you may find some questions which are relatable with chapter 1 2 and 3 but uh, over there also there will be questions and this chapter may have correlated questions but obviously uh, I mean in that those three chapters also you will find about flight control part but it is not actually flight control but it is actually the flight dynamics that we talk about over there the stability is the operational point of view whatever is required that we talk about here we will be talking about the technical part of a flight control that how it works what is it in uh, what exactly it is made up of and uh, how exactly it functions and all those things okay so as you are already aware of in first uh, three two three modules we have discussed in the sub modules we have already discussed that there are three axes of a flight we know the vertical axis or the normal axis about which the aircraft will yaw and yawing is done by which uh, flight control by radar then we have got uh, through we have got lateral axis which is from one wing tip to the other wing tip from the left to the right of the wing and uh, that through that particular uh, axis what we do is uh, sorry about that particular axis we will do what pitching okay pitch up and pitch down and that is done by which control surface by elevator and the rolling that we will do by the help of ailerons okay that is about the longitudinal axis which is from the nose to the tail of the aircraft okay uh, okay normally these are hinged or movable ailerons so there is a dgca question i'll also try to put up the dgca questions as well i mean uh, i'll be telling you in this video only what are the dgca questions that we have uh, normally the ones that we that i have seen most of the times uh, there is a dgca question whether is a flight control movable or it is fixed or both see flight control is something that you have to move to control your aircraft okay so it has to be movable boss it cannot be fixed anywhere uh, if it is given fixed i really doubt it cannot be fixed because if it's fixed you actually can't control that okay you actually cannot control that that flight control thing oh and uh, so the option should be like uh, the you have to mark movable obviously in that case okay Typically, the ailerons and the elevators are operated from the flight deck by means of a control stick. Normally, we have a control wheel or a yoke assembly in the joy the joystick or whatever we call it as. Normally, that is used to control the uh, aircraft uh, in all three axes. And uh, the climb, dive, moment, whatever you have, the pitch of an aircraft, that is all controlled by the uh, joystick only. Role of an aircraft will be controlled by the ailerons and in such instances uh, the control network may lock out the okay fine now what is this they are talking about they are talking about that in such instances which instance I will tell you the control network may lock out the outboard ailerons during high speed flight and the inboard ailerons may be designed to slightly droop when the trailing edge flaps are extended and in addition to the ailerons spoilers may also be incorporated into aileron system now what is this aileron system will be talk about we generally know aileron is used for rolling right now let's say the aircraft is flying at a lower speed and you require a great i mean it, you require a good amount of uh, banking on the left or right any any side let's say 
Now, how will you do it? Obviously, we will uh, use your ailerons, right? Now, one aileron will be going down, uh, another one will be, opposite one will be going up. I mean, depending on which side you are rolling. Now, to assist an aileron, you can use spoilers. Let's say the side on which we don't want the lift to be produced or the lift should be less. So, what we do? We actually put up the aileron on that side, right? So, if the aileron goes up on that side, we can also to assist the aileron so that that need, need not to be put too much, we can use the spoilers also on that side. Spoilers will also reduce the lift and that will help the ailerons so that you don't have to move the ailerons too much. Okay? So, you can incorporate spoilers also into the aileron system to reduce the lift. See, spoiler cannot be used to increase the lift in any way, but it can definitely be used to decrease the lift on the side in which you want to bank. So, on the banking side, the aileron goes up, the spoilers also goes up to assist the aircraft, okay? Uh, I mean, the uh, assist the ailerons of the aircraft. But, in two situations, you have to imagine this. This is the one that they are talking about, the instances. This is a DCA question already. At high speed, you require less movement of the control surfaces because it is already at very high speed. So, when you just move a little bit of your control surface, any control surface, not only ailerons, it may be the radar also, the elevator also, anything that you move only a bit amount, only by three, few degrees, like let's say three to five degrees, it will give you a huge impact. Okay, it will give you a huge turn. So, at high speed, we should not use the outboard ailerons because outboard ailerons are the uh, tip of the wing, the, the trailing edge or the tip section of the wings uh, is it's very, very, you know, effective at high speed. So, you should only use the inboard ones. So, at high speed, automatically, the outboard ones will be locked. Okay? Only the inboard ones you can use. Only the inboard ones will be allowed to use and the outboard ones will be locked. So, these are DCA question. Fine? Okay. Because at that high speed, you don't require such huge uh, movement. At that high speed, if you move your outboard ailerons, so you will get a huge turn or a very sharp turn. So, that may cause a lot of, uh, you know, turbulence or other, uh, even the aircraft can skid or slip from its desired path. Okay. There may be a fatal accident also you may lose the control of the aircraft all total so that to avoid that it is totally a system oriented thing that the system itself is not allowing you to do anything with the outboard aileron so only it allows to maneuver the inboard aileron at high speed at low speed both of the ailerons will be working fine but the at high speed only the inboard one will work now, uh, the left and the right movement or yaw of an aircraft that is controlled by the radar, we know, employ a lower and upper radar, means one radar can have two parts, one upper part, one lower part, same case just like your ailerons, at high speed, you will be allowed to move only one part, okay, like over here they have given like uh, when you are uh, for control while flying at lower speeds, both the radars are used, I mean the entire part of the radar will be used as a single radar unit. But uh, normally at high speed what will happen, only a single part will be allowed, either the lower part or the upper part depending on the uh, manufacturer in what way he or she designs the aircraft, okay. Because you don't require the entire radar area to be moved uh, at high speed. So only a par partial part or uh, only a half part of the radar if it moves, that is more than enough, okay. <sighs> Then we have secondary flight controls, uh, where secondary flight controls include the spoilers, leading edge flaps, the leading edge slats, the trailing edge flaps and the speed brakes. Now why they are secondary? See, uh, in earlier cases we know that all these things are not there in our aircraft, right? The secondary flight controls were not there. In the modern aircrafts only we can find the secondary flight controls because they make the aircraft more steady, more dynamic, a better one. Uh, enhanced one, fuel saving, many factors are coming into consideration for which secondary flight controls have been involved. But only primary flight controls are the basic flight controls that is your radar, your elevator and your ailerons are the basic ones that are required to only fly as, I mean, as good as you re really require to fly. But the secondary ones are used to enhance the performance, okay. So secondary flight controls include spoilers, which will decrease your lift. By the name, we can understand. It's a spoiler. What is a spoiler? 
ओके स्पॉल इट इज समथिंग दैट डिस्ट्रॉयज और लाइक दैट दैट स्टॉप समथिंग दैट हिंडर समथिंग दैट दैट विल ब्रेक समथिंग सो वॉट विट वॉट विल इट ब्रेक हियर इट विल डिक्रीज द लिफ्ट ओके इट डिक्रीजेज द लिफ्ट देन लीडिंग एज फ्लैप्स आर देयर विच गोज डाउन फ्रॉम द लीडिंग एज यू मस्ट हैव सीन वेन पायलट ऑपरेट्स इट एंड दैट विल ऑल्सो इंक्रीज द कैम्बर ऑफ द विंग दैट विल गिव अस मोर लिफ्ट लीडिंग एज स्लैट्स आर देयर ट्रेलिंग एज फ्लैप्स आर देयर in the same way and speed brakes are there in some cases now speed brake where it is operated normally speed brake will be not there there are two types of brakes in uh, flight we generally use the spoilers to decrease the speed and the lift okay we don't use the speed brakes if it is a ground speed brake then it should be only operated at ground if you are allowed to operate that in the air then you can do it but only there will be certain operational requirements i mean like there will be certain maximum speed uh beyond which you cannot use those speed brakes if you do it then the speed brake itself will break and go away in the air like damaged all total due to that huge velocity of air coming from the front okay so at uh, below certain speed you can use the speed brake and uh, after ca- coming down on the ground also you can use it okay now trim controls now what is this see trimming means what like we uh, like your let's consider your beards okay you have beard and you you don't want to go for a clean shave so you just want to trim it means what you just want to edit it to some extent you don't want to just uh, change it all total change your look all total so means what you are editing it you are editing a bit amount if or you are just nurturing it a bit amount so that it it gives a different look so in the same way here also we are trimming something trimming means it is like editing Uh, one action which is already there means let's say i have uh, uh, a radar movement i have to do or maybe a elevator mod- movement i have to do now it is at a certain level already holding its position now it is flying but for a pilot's point of view let's say he is thinking that maybe this is not the right uh, movement that has happened but this is not the right angle at which the uh, control lever should be so what he will do he will just trim it let's say 1 degree or 2 degree up or down depending on what is required so that minimum amount of trimming will give him uh, a good amount of uh, actuator movement which will solve his problem okay he will come back to the track where he is supposed to be fine so this includes the trim controls of what are the tabs that you can trim actually here you can uh, use trim tabs okay which will trim the big control surface servo tabs are there okay balance tabs are there then spring tabs are there trim tabs can be used to correct any tendency of the aircraft to move toward trim tabs can be used to correct any tendency of the aircraft to move toward an undesirable flight attitude okay which means that let's say the aircraft is flying uh, towards the left wing low left wing low means it is banking towards left means that is not a desired thing if you bank continuously towards left you will you can never go straight okay you will be going towards left only and your height will also decrease slowly right so to avoid that what you have to do is you have to either put your right aileron up to decrease the lift on that side or you have to trim your left aileron down to increase the lift on that side so now how you can do that you have got trim tabs okay you have got trim tabs which are also very small aerodynamic surfaces or the part of the control surface like part of the aileron part of the radar part of the elevator okay it is a part of it that can also be controlled now when you control that part oh, i hope you have already discussed about tabs in the if you go through the uh, first sub modules first few sub modules like in the first or the second one probably you will get it definitely about tabs so that is how it is there so uh, tab is basically is a single uh, unit but it is a part of the control surface itself where it m- will move in the opposite direction to actually uh, move your main control surface in the other direction okay so that the flight attitude can be tackled so uh, like if it it was flying left wing low it will be corrected and it will fly straight okay so trim out any unbalanced condition trim tab the function of trim tab is to trim out any unbalanced condition without exerting any pressure on the primary flight controls primary flight controls need not need to be moved there is no reason there is no requirement to move your primary flight control surface even without moving that you can 
actually control your or actually move your primary flight control without even actuating it how by the help of your trim tab okay if you move your trim tab your main flymany control for surface will automatically move next we come to servo tab where uh, sometimes referred to as the flight tabs also they aid in moving the main control surface and holding it in the desired position which means the tabs will have a servo mechanism okay servo mechanism means it will have a mechanical as well as electrical depending on what type of uh, movements you have normally it should be mechanical anyway so that servo mechanism is uh, acts act in what way like if you have to hold a certain position of a flight control surface so these tabs when you just operate them they will go and hold that they will go and allow allow that control surface to hold that position so that pilot need not need to be hold that control position all over all throughout the flight if there is some problem in the control surface let's say in the radar or elevator now it is go going on the left side continuously or maybe it's flying towards the right side continuously now to eliminate that problem the pilot the pilot needs to hold it in the opposite direction he needs to hold the control stick in the opposite direction now throughout the flight he cannot do it because he needs to do other things also he needs to check his checklists uh his food will come his coffee is going to come he needs to eat also he will be thinking about other things as well so who will be managing the other things right and who will come and hold the joystick for him so in that case the system has been incorporated in the flight deck only through which you can actually allow the flight control surfaces to be hold to be held at a point okay by the help of servo tabs theek okay? hai okay then there are balance tabs balance tabs also work in the same way see these names are very important by the name you have to remember they are doing what the servo is assisting you giving you some mechanical power to hold it somewhere the trim tab was to just trim the uh, error or the correction of your flight control balance will do what it will balance the thing how it will balance the thing it will go to go in the opposite direction and where whatever the aerodynamic load will come and hit it in the opposite direction with that it will move your control surface in the other direction if it goes towards left and whatever the load it is facing due to the air as it is mounted in the control surface so control surface will also be moved in the opposite direction of the motion of the tab if tabs goes on the right side control surface will move in the left side okay in that way it will be holding the or it will be balancing the load okay by the help of air it is not using anything it is just using the oncoming air that air that is coming from the front that only it is using that's the reason it has been said aerodynamic forces aerodynamic forces means the force that is caused due to the incoming air which is coming and hitting it okay okay that also assists assists the pilot in holding that uh, control surface then you have got spring tabs spring tabs is what spring tabs are having a spring mounted which is actually used in some cases for the per same purpose as hydraulic actuator is used to aid the pilot in moving the primary flight control surface okay these springs actually assist the pilot in moving the primary flight control surface where he need not need to put a lot of load a lot of effort on the control stick the springs are enough to actually push those huge flight control surfaces which requires a lot of force to push them because due to the huge aerodynamic forces coming from the front at very high speed okay uh, pushing something against the wind is very difficult right so you have seen how big the radars and elevators are so for a person or uh, even both of them even if they try then also they can't do it in the cockpit right so it definitely requires some mechanical or uh, you know technicalities only then it is possible so these things have been incorporated now we go to active load control there is a question from active load control what is active load control first of all active load control is nothing but it is a distribution of load okay it is what it is a system whereby the stressed placed of the wings are redistributed to reduce the focus of the loads encountered during maneuvering involving rolls okay let's say whenever there is a roll all mostly in case of a roll the loading on the wing is happening because you see when the aircraft is flying what is happening there is a lift force that is acting from the bottom surface okay and there is a other part of the lift load that is sucking the Uh, or uh, pulling the uh, aircraft wings on the upper uh, towards the uh, i mean towards the upper surface or rather i i, I should say like towards the top okay uh, to, uh, so 
both the forces i mean if you have seen in the lift and drag diagram you will understand that uh, there is a suction force on the top and there is a push force on the bottom and these two together forms the lift right so when these two forces will be considered as lift and they will be acting on the wings so whenever an aircraft will be banking on left or right the wing that is going down that will be having more and more amount of uh, force to encounter because the other wing which is uh, like which has gone up it is not giving any lift now so who needs to take the uh, that that burden the other wing which has gone down right so if it is banking on the right let's say so obviously uh, like okay uh, let's say if if there is a uh, aircraft like this and it is banking on the right side it is going down on the right side means more amount of lift is being produced here and less less amount of lift is being produced here why because this has gone up so it is now not give, giving that same amount of lift its angle of attack and everything has changed okay on the left so but the aircraft its own weight who is supporting the weight now so obviously this wing is more burden now okay so now all the loads will be distributed to this wing so any point of the wing should not have a lot of load that needs to be distributed that is the reason it is called as active load control which means you will be like sharing the load with all the members in such a way that a certain part of the aircraft a certain part of the wing will not be loaded too much during a roll same goes for the left side also if the aircraft would have banked in the left side like this then also the left side would have got more burden than the right side okay now this these are also called as g loads so g will increase with the bank angle which means the more you bank the more you uh, i mean bank towards the right or left more amount of g loads will be applied on your body you will face more and more amount of lift from the bottom so it's not a good thing for the aircraft structure so how to actually control it? so one example of active load control what they have done they have actually incorporated a system which is called roll maneuver load elevation approach okay R M L A approach. So, what is an R M L A approach? Is a network that varies control surfaces, deflections, and extensions based roll command given by the pilot. So, whatever the pilot is giving, let's say he is trying to bank at 30 degree angle. Okay. Now, he that roll command, okay, it will be distributed or rather varied. Okay. It will be distributed or rather that command. Command means what? It is the 30 degree that is desired by the pilot. So that 30 degree bank, if the aircraft is doing, whatever the load will be there on that wing, that needs to be distributed or shared. So RMLA system, that is load maneuver, load alleviation, will be doing what? Will actually allow the wing to distribute the load. And how it will do? Using the flexibility of the wing and torsional load placed on the wing structure, the RMLA system moderates and eliminates the deflection of the outboard aileron during rolls and relies on the deflection of the inboard ailerons and movement of the leading edge flight control surfaces. Which means, which means that we know that high speed at high speed, uh, the outboard ailerons are very effective, so we cannot use them. Outboard ailerons will be, this RMLA will do what? This will not allow the outboard ailerons to acti be active so much. It will be used very less. Mainly the inboard aileron will be used so that the distribution is proper. So that if, if it uses a lot of outboard ailerons, then the wing tip will be bending too much. Okay. And uh, like it will cause a lot of uh, load on the point where it is actually fixed with the fuselage. Okay. So more and more load will come on the that joint. So in order to avoid that, what it will do, it will distribute more load towards the root side than the tip side. Okay, so that is the job of RMLA. Not going into deep depth to this because I have not seen any question from here. But from your uh, active load control, one question have come. Uh, that is why it is used. It's mainly because it's used in rolling and all. That has come. RMLA approach related questions I have not seen. But you have to know that how this is done. So how this is done? This is the active load control is done by the help of RMLA approach. Just remember this. It is a load maneuvering, load alleviation. That is the distribution of uh, load during rolling. Okay. 
fine. Then we have high lip devices where there is leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps, slats and slots. Okay. So whenever, uh, see, on the right side you can see the pictures also. So trailing edge flaps, when you see, these are the uh, pictures of trailing edge flap only. The first one you can see it's a split flap. I'm not just reading it, you can read it. All yellow marked things are there. Only thing that you need to know is what it does. Whenever you uh, put the flaps down, you see the camber actually increases. Camber means the uh, curvature. Camber means the curvature. See, the curvature increases. So more the curvature increases like this, it, it the wing actually becomes like a bird's wing. You must have seen when a bird actually... Uh, flies and it has to land what it will do is it will just put all its wings on the back side okay it will bend its wing completely it will make the wing like a uh, you know like this type of a structure and it will go down on the back the, all the feathers will go down on the back so that will do what it will allow lot of air resistance so it actually increases the lift okay also during landing it de increases the drag as well lift is also increased drag is also increased so depending on the condition okay in case of lift uh, in case of increasing lift coefficient or drag coefficient whatever you want to increase so depending on the situation the flap is actually operated fine so this is a split flap see uh, sorry this is a plain flap this one this is a plain flap it's a very simple thing it's a part of the wing only it is hinged at that particular point so that red, red section that you are seeing that is the flap it can go down it cannot go up okay it can go down because going up has got no relation going up and down is the job of the aileron flap will only go down because you have to increase the camber at the bottom side not on the top side okay uh, then you have got a slotted flap slotted means wing section is there but after that after that also the flap is externally it is attached attached to the surface okay when it is not operated it will flush with the bottom surface of the wing and when it will operate it will come down okay that is the reason it called split means it is like it is splitting with the it is it is getting split from the wing so it is a split flap next we have a slotted flap what is a slotted flap see it is creating a slot through which this blue color line that goes no that is the air actually so what it does is when we will have a high angle of attack all the airs will go like this okay and it will form this type of vortices that decreases the lift now how to eliminate these vortices so the best way is you create a slot over here okay between the flap and this so the lower high speed air will be going up like this and it will wash away all these vortices along with it so there will be free movement of air flowing over the surface okay so there will be no drag okay so this decreases drag and increases lift it's fowler flap uh, sorry uh, slotted flap so it creates a slot what is a fowler flap it is a combination of two things okay it is also creating a slot you can see it is also having a slot over here but you can also see that it has gone back it was here basically right it has gone back the flap has actually come here which means it is also increasing your span from here to here right which is also increasing your lift so it is increasing the span it is increasing uh, it is making a slot as well so this is called fowler flap next one this is a slotted fowler flap where you have got two slots there may be three three slots also in some cases it was here basically so from here it has one one part of it has gone here another part has gone over here so you can see there are two slots now created okay sometimes it is also called as double slotted flap if there are triple triple parts of flaps then that will be called as triple slotted flap or slotted fowler flap okay various names can be there remember they are all used to increase lift decrease drag okay and it helps to actually get better lift within a short runway and all this cases okay lift dump and speed brakes now why is lift dumping and speed brakes are required because if you have to get down somewhere if you have to retard your speed somewhere so you have to have some brake right in air obviously your wheels will not be assisting you 
your wheel brakes will never assist you you have to land only then only your wheel brakes will work right so how will you stop in air how will you stop yourself in air so you have to in increase just the way if you have to uh, move fast you increases your lift right so in the same way over here in this case it is not just you have to simply retard the speed of your engine so you will get reduced lift yes true you will get it but there is some momentum of the aircraft also so that momentum will push the aircraft further even if you decrease the lift so at control level if you have to come down you have to use certain devices so this these are the devices basically there is a lift dump or speed brake system that the lift is decreasing in this in by the help of these devices if it is a speed brake or maybe a spoiler and the ground spoiler are extended only after the aircraft is on the ground assisting in the braking action that is if you have to assist the braking of your wheel after landing because at after landing also the speed is very huge and you have a, let's say you have a very shorter runway and you have to stop immediately but your wheels even if you continuously use your brakes but still it will not allow such fast stopping so what you have to do is you have to use certain other mechanism also which is this ground spoiler okay ground spoiler will be operated to reduce the speed by the help of air resistance or drag and at the same time your wheel will be assisted by the help of that so both the things will stop your aircraft very fast on the runway flight spoilers assist in lateral control what is a lateral control lateral control is basically flight spoilers are the ones that we know that are there on the top of the wing mainly those are used in the in case of a flight in air only and the main function of uh, those spoilers is to actually assist the aileron i have already said about this right that it will be assisting the ailerons okay um, that even if the aileron bangs on the right or on the left so the on the side on which the down going sorry on the side on which the up going aileron is there where you require the lift to be uh, decreased that is the side you are going down or you are banking let's say you are banking on the left so on that side the flight spoiler will go up to assist the aileron so that aileron need not need to go up too much okay that's how it is designed now you have uh, something which is okay so when actuated as speed brakes the spoilers panels on the both wings raise up okay so when you actually use the speed brakes the spoiler panels on both wings will raise up which means uh, you are, now you are not using it for rolling action or anything you are using to stop your aircraft okay to retard the speed to decrease the speed or to retard the speed when you apply the speed brakes on all sides on both the sides okay wherever the speed brakes are there all the speed brakes will go up and cause a huge air resistance to stop the aircraft immediately fine then you have got a control system operation which talks about how it actually is controlled okay all the systems that we talked about what are the mechanical controls we have this is the basic type of a system that was used to control any early aircraft and is currently used in smaller aircrafts where aerodynamic forces acting on the controls are not excessive okay where the radar the elevators the um, ailerons are not facing that much of high speed air okay where the top speed is very less there you can actually control the control surfaces so there you don't require it but where it is like it's airbus or boeing the ones that we are applying for the modules the heavy aircrafts there you definitely require lot of other assistable things which will assist you in movement so what are those normally in the mechanical system we had cables push pull tubes bell cranks levers jack screws cable drums and torque tubes okay but in modern aircrafts these are very less at the same time there were some gust locks like during gust wind so that the ailerons and the radars and elevators don't start moving all of a sudden due to huge impact of air loads during the storms and the cyclones so a gust lock is there which limit the external wind forces from damage, damaging the control surfaces okay because see if you move if if they are all mechanically linked which means if you move the control control stick or the joystick in the cockpit your radar will move right your ailerons will move your elevators will move so which also means that if you move the elevator and the radars physically from outside your control stick will also move your entire mechanical system will also move right so that is an adverse thing that should not happen so during 
external wind force when it is there during cyclone storm gust okay cross winds what happens is if the aircraft is parked somewhere and nobody is there in the aircraft so what will happen it will cause a huge impact on all those control surfaces and those control surfaces will in the adverse way it will affect your mechanical control system and control cables and all other parts so to stop that you have got gust locks which limit the movement okay when it is parked or tied down in the aircraft during any storm or cyclone fine control cables uh, usually they are of 7 into 7 or 7 into 9 flexible steel wires those those who have read about uh, module 6 and module 7 they will be aware of this see i'm still giving a brief idea 7 into 7 means there will be seven uh, strands and seven wires which means one wire will be made with uh, seven strands and uh, okay just a confusion uh, okay i'll i'll just clear this uh, later on anyway uh, you can also google it i'm having a confusion in uh, like uh, it's a strand and where uh, multiplication like i'm giving an idea how it is made just a minute see there will be this is the entire cable structure if you see and if there are seven okay strands making one cable then there will be seven wires also which will make one strand like this okay that's how they are divided i hope you understand now that seven wire will be making one uh, strand and one strand will make seven uh, sorry seven strands will make one cable okay seven seven wires will make one strand and seven strands will make one cable fine in the same way in the same way seven wires will make one cable and 19 such cables will make sorry seven strands will make one strand and 19 such strand will make one cable okay uh just like you must have seen in any rope also that's how they are made and they are twisted all together so they are very flexible especially the 7 into 19 one is more flexible than the 7 into 7 one and they are usually used uh, in flexible cables do not have strength when pushed obviously but they are used for pulling purposes okay if you have to pull any control surface then you can use them control cables may run the entire length of the control mechanism manipulated by the crew and control quadrant control drum torque tube bell crank lever these are all the associated things which changes the direction of the uh, cable somewhere which will assist the cable somewhere the pulleys the uh, clamps the holding positions so all these things all together this small small parts that they are talking about this together forms the entire linkage from your cockpit control till the control surface okay all throughout the aircraft so they run from the pilot's control mechanism till all the hydraulic valves and other devices fine okay on the right we talk about the data will have size and type of the cable the type of fittings to be attached to the ends of the cable specified length of the cable all thing all these things will be there and pulleys may be used for changing the direction we know that pulleys are normally used to change any ropes direction and uh, fair leads are used to guide the control cable uh see these are the fair leads these are the fair leads you can see is given this steel color tubing that you see through which the cables are actually guided it is not simply left inside the uh, fuselage in any way otherwise it will not be moving in the proper direction okay it may sag down it may come down or it may just go and strike some other part scratch them so it is better to put them through fair leads so that they pass through a central line altogether okay there are turn buckles also turn buckles are usually used to actually set the tension of all these uh, cables as required okay these are the turn buckles picture of turn buckles you put the cables from both the sides and there are threads over here here and here okay those threads if you have to just move and then adjust the tension and then you can lock them there are locking mechanism which will lock them okay fine uh, the next part of it i'll uh, continue in other part 
today up till here i think uh, it will be uh, more than enough whatever i've said on this part you just go through this uh, within the next one i think i'll be in the next part i'll be able to complete the entire thing uh, not much is left to be completed for this chapter it will be done in the next part for sure okay thank you so much keep following this and i'll definitely try to put up videos as fast as possible to finish this